That would be that would be against the rules. Greetings, everyone. I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad that you are here. Uh, today's nonsense is in historic, and we are going to be playing a little bit of Arcane Bombardment. Uh, folks, this card is wild. It's doing silly things. I love it. Six mana, do nothing enchantment. So you already know I'm on board, right? Whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery each turn, notably each turn, so our turn and our opponent's turn, Exile an instant or sorcery card at random from your graveyard. Then copy each card exiled with Arcane Bombardment. You may cast any number of copies without paying their mana costs. All right, so what are we trying to do here? Well, uh, we need to delay the game to get to the ability to cast Arcane Bombardment. Cast Arcane Bombardment. And then just follow it up with any instants or sorceries. Doesn't really matter, right? Because then it starts exiling instants and sorceries from our bin, and we start to cast them for free, uh, creating card advantage, you know, because we're casting cards for free, right? Okay, so here's the plan. Uh, first of all, I should note that I did play some of these games with one version of the deck, and then I changed it because I actually streamed with the deck, and then on stream we... Uh, refined the deck some more and did some more tweaking and uh, and knob turning and things like that and then I completed the last uh, couple of games or game or two I don't even know however many games uh, with a different version of the deck this version I believe is better than the previous version so a couple of the games you might see will be of a different version but the same or the general game plan is still the same uh, it's uh, we, we only tweaked a few of the surrounding pieces right so the most expedient way to win burn down the house it is both our one of our best delaying tactics because it's a board sweeper it keeps the board clean but you can also create three one one devils with haste and when those devils die they deal a damage somewhere so uh if we can get a burn down the house under arcane bombardment just basically every t every single turn we get to make three new one one hasty creatures uh and it does end the game relatively quickly once we get it going similarly uh, Igneous Inspiration deals three damage to any target, which admittedly can be the opponent's face. If we can get this under Arcane or under Arcane Bombardment, so we can cast it every single turn, we get access to our entire wishboard, which means casting, that's right, sorceries from our, you know, we get them into our hand from our sideboard, then the next turn we cast them again. So we could get Mascot Exhibition exiled under Arcane Bombardment or, you know, Elemental Summoning or Spirit Summoning or something, and we just get these free creatures every turn, and then we beat down and kill our opponent. Uh, similarly, there is Static Discharge. Starting Intensity 3, uh, it Static Discharge deals damage equal to its intensity to any target, then perpetually increase Static Discharge's intensity and the intensity of all cards named Static Discharge in your graveyard, hand, and library by one. Notably, it does not say Exile. So, if we cast Static Discharge and Exile it under Arcane Bombardment, its, stat or its intensity stays the same. It is... Uh, exile that is outside the game it is not going to have its intensity increase while under arcane bombardment but if we have a static discharge under arcane bombardment and we are holding a static discharge and we cast you know this goes off this goes off this goes off every time static discharge happens it happens in our hand graveyard and exile or i mean uh, in library as well uh, then, as far as the rest of them goes, we have a couple more board sweepers, Anger of the Gods, Sweltering Suns, uh, Valakut Awakening for land drops, uh, and Filtering, and then Spike Field Hazard uh, for land drops, and the ability to trigger Arcane Bombardment uh, as well. You know, uh, Cosmos Elixir for staying in the game, and importantly, adding additional cards to our hand later on in the game. Once we've got Arcane Bombardment now down, the only thing we need is just spells to cast so the scrying is almost as good as drawing a card a lot of the time because darn it all we need is to find an instant or sorcery and start getting a bunch of value so let's go play some games shall we all right folks here we are up against jewel spock good luck jewel spock and yeah i think this hand is keepable you'll note uh there are stone range in this version um this again this is the first version we had um before i played it on stream the the stone rain was fun i really really wanted to get stone rain under an arcane bombardment and just stone rain our opponent out of the game but after we had an opportunity to play it enough times on stream and stuff we elected that 
the stone rain was a little too slow. If you too were thinking, man, it would be a lot of fun to do. Well, okay, I wouldn't fault you for putting it in there. It is an instant or sorcery. It does slow the game down a lot of the time. It's just not quite as consistent. That said, our opponent goes with Lanamore Elves and into a Freilise on their turn two. We go with a Forbidden Friendship. Again, another sorcery spell that can could be exiled and give us an expedient win condition. Um, we did end up pulling that as well, just for more ways of delaying the game and slowing the game down and card filtering. Uh, so uh, our opponent attacks in with a very large Lanor Elf. We anger the gods and sweep it away. Uh, the burn down the house looking very good there. Uh, we're just worried they might keep ticking Freilis up. No, they don't. Feels good, man. They elect to cash in on some of that value. They go and get a card and cast an Elsor Shepherd. I assume that's the one they found. So, in fairness, it did kind of work out for them. Uh, we are going to Stone Rain their Castle Garen Brig to keep them off a bunch of mana because, in fairness, the Freilis is now, even if it ticks up, going to be able to be hit by this burn down the house opponent. Does tick up Freilis and hit the Elvish Visionary. Imperius Perfect comes down and anthems the team. But all those things are fine. Burn down the house. You may leave two cards remaining. Jewel Spock. What will you do? Well, okay. I guess. If that's the way this is going to be, we will animate a Den of the Bugbear and start getting in. We really would like our Arcane Bombardment here, but did not find it. Imperius Perfect comes down. Well... That's uh, going to be a pretty good target for Static Discharge if we don't find another spell. We do need to go with an untapped land so that we can still activate the Den of the Bugbear, though. So what the heck, we'll do that thing. Yes, get in. Well, folks, uh, we're, there might not be time for Arcane Bombardment after all because uh, our Den of the Bugbear is just getting the job done all on its own. Opponent, Marwin the Nurturer. Presumably just a land in hand. Oh boy, look at that. Uh, Spike Field Hazard off the top. Timely draw. Admittedly, we're not surprised. We have an awful lot of controlling things happening in our deck. And sure enough, Jewel Spock going to scoop them up. GG, Jewel Spock. Um, good game. All right, folks. Here we are up against Gabe. Good luck, Gabe. And yeah. All right. I think this is a keepable hand. We're going to start on a Mount Tan. And progress directly into Forbidden Friendship, almost certainly. Well, actually, this, the Soul Warden makes things interesting, right? If they slam a, you know, a Johnny Pridemate-style creature, suddenly things are awkward, right? Yeah, okay. Well, they didn't, so I think this is a good opportunity for Forbidden Friendship. It doesn't grow really, or, you know, we're not growing a creature by casting it. And it does give us a few turns to chump block things. Just really worried our opponent might go off here obviously and Heliod well that kind of qualifies but fine land and it's not like we have anything else to do so I guess stone rain past the turn we attack here yeah I think we want to encourage our opponent um oh boy Thinking about blocking? They do block. Wow. That's wild to me. Did not expect that whatsoever. The opponent going to Luminous Phantom so that Heliod can put a counter on it. Uh, our opponent recognizing that we are of the more slow-moving variety and elects to try and capitalize on that. That's fine. We uh, will hold back so the Soul Warden can't beat us down. We don't want to attack into a Luminous Phantom anyway. And our opponent going to get in with Luminous Phantom and give it lifelink does so this is one of those games where the the stone rain actually did really good work here uh oh boy cosmos elixir is tempting but let's be real here uh sending them back to the stone age is the thing that we're most interested in because our opponent could easily cast the Najani's pride mate style creature and you know grow it really really fast particularly if they have a land drop and maybe another soul warden or anything like that right uh, yeah, in this in this case it was Lunar Veteran. So 
take care of business there. Land, and this is a great opportunity. It's Arcane Bombardment time. Gabe, your go. All right. Voice the Blast Seat. They did have it, and that was exactly why we were uh, playing around it. The Heliod puts the counter on the Voice of the Blast, and we're not going to fool around. Uh, it's just burn down the house time, and we burn down the Voice of the Blast. Exile a burn down the house, and uh, boom. Uh, if we had, we didn't know what instant or sorcery we were going to exile there, so. Uh, we're very fortunate it was the Murder Down the House. We would have chosen our modes differently if it had been that way, but obviously we still get to ping three damage out of the face, so we're not disappointed. And in the future, there are a whole bunch of Burn Down the Houses to be done. Yep. Land. Land. And we're trying to figure out which one we're going to get, so we're just going to try another Burn Down the House here. And... Gonna make dudes, gonna make dudes, uh, and gonna make dudes. That's right, folks. We exiled another burn down the house. That was pretty fortunate. So then we end up with uh, nine devil creatures. So we're just gonna crash in here. Yeah, that's a lot. Opponent thinking, holy crud, how did we get here? Probably didn't read the text on those devil creatures. The fact that when they die, they ping means I think that was pretty safely a little bit of a punt here. Of course, you might be asking, why not cast the Forbidden Friendship as well? You get an extra point of damage. Well, we don't have extra instants and sorceries right now. We know that casting a couple more Burn Down the Houses that are exiled under Arcane Bombardment is lethal, right? So we want to be able to be certain that we've got all these Burn Down the Houses being triggered. So we're going to save our instant or sorcery. In this case, it's Forbidden Friendship. For the following turn, Arcane Bombardment, Exiles, uh, Stone Rain, a pair of Burn Down the Houses. You can't be too sad about that. Yes, please get that out of here. Burn Down the House, Burn Down the House, Forbidden Friendship. Uh, Den of the Bugbear, charge in our opponent saying, yeah, 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 you got us. And you're right, GG, opponent GG. All right, folks. Yeah, we're up against Tomb. Good luck, Tomb. And I think the hand is keepable. It's not great. Oh, no. <laughs> Position of Kozilek. Not thrilled about that. Uh, reaching into our hand and going to grab either Static Discharge or a Braid. They go with the Braid. That's suspicious. Are you running Artifacts, opponent? Oh, crud. No, it's more that you're scared of instance. Inconvenient. Uh, opponent doing some kind of reanimate nonsense. No, and they're exiling our graveyard? Oh. What kind of jerk does that? All right, well, fine. Uh, let's play a land. I think we are going to try and stone rain here because our static discharge or igneous inspiration doesn't even kill the Ashiok anyway. And we were a little bit worried that our opponent was going to be able to do more graveyardy things, you know? Opponent does the deed. Well, sure. Igneous Inspiration. Feeling pretty not super confident about what's going on here, you know? Uh, thinking about the start from scratch because our opponent did, you know, want to protect against artifacts here. I So, you know, the, the most important feature on that card is going to be that it's a, a, a sorcery anyway, but... We're worried they might also be trying to reanimate Parhelion things, or whatever, right? So another Stone Rain, actually not terrible here. Ooh, Priest of Fell Rites, though. Inconvenient. So we decide to sweep the board. It's quite possible I was just supposed to Static Discharge the Priest of Fell Rites, so that I could also Stone Rain. Um, but, you know. All right, opponent faithfully mends. And does get the Unbearer Rites into the bin. Inconvenient. All right. No! Inquisition of Kozilek going to take our Stone Rain. I think that definitely, uh, that decision did definitely come back to bite us here. Um, 
Yeah, trying to decide if we're supposed to burn down the house or not. Our opponent, obviously, prom you know, the plan is almost certainly to get back Toxrel. So we would eventually like to get rid of those things. Suddenly regretting my start from scratch decision. I'm going to gain some life, do a little scrying. Send a land to the bottom. Opponent does, in fact, want Toxrel. Can't blame them. And going to do a little bit of that stuff. Okay, well, I mean, that's a good one. It exiles things. The question is, is it better off as a land? We know we're going to need to cast multiple spells to get rid of the Toxrel. But, it, you know, just killing the Toxrel feels pretty bad because they just, they just reanimate it again. You know, so what we elect to do is put it down into the, uh, into the land base there. And hope to get, you know, we're going to need to get a little bit lucky here, I think. I, I don't think we're going to win this game without getting a little lucky. Ah, uh, crud. All right, well, fine. So, burn down the house, I guess. Trying to slow him down. Yep, and static discharge. Opponent going to sacrifice it. Just, yep, and draws a card. All right. Uh, in retrospect, we were supposed to do those backwards because the Static Discharge Resolving does give it intensity. Uh, so, oh no, stinking den of the bugbear. We've done a lot of scrying here, folks, and we're still just not quite getting there. We're going to go ahead and Field of Ruin one of their white sources there, both to thin our deck, not that that's a huge thing, but I oh, was seeing if we could take them off of a white source. Turns out they do have a plane, so it's not a big deal. Hey, little Cosmos Elixir doing a little scrying. We find an arcane bombardment on top. How about them apples? Okay, maybe we're not dead. Uh, we do have six mana and a sorcery to cast. So, let's see. Priest Fell Rites. Comes back. Gets activated. Brings back... Kairi. Seven damage. Crashes in down to 12. That's not very many points of life. Especially not when your opponent is showing you 13. Alright. Arcane Bombardment. Come on down. Start from scratch. Pinging. The Toxrel. Igneous Inspiration. Hits the Toxrel. Yeah, actually, no. That was incorrect, wasn't it? Inconvenient. Um, now, we know... Okay, we don't need that. We know what we need here is we're going to need to cleanse the board. And uh, we just need to be able to cast an instant sorcery, right? So we go to s for the mascot exhibition, attempting to flood the board, so to speak. And oh no, Jenga Taxis is here. Uh, so we know they're going to counter our stuff. But we've got to get lucky. We need to get our burn down the house. Hey! Yes! Alright, so there's that. And that. And... Okay. All the things go away. And we take a little bit of a risk here. Um, the the Kairi's ward is you know, a, a thing we can't really get around. Um, oh, no. Mask her worm. So close. GG, Tomb. GG. Alright, folks. Here we are up against the Legendary G. Good luck, Legendary G. Okay. Hand not great, but fine you know we have a number of different things we can try and do here a little bit of forbidden friendship for attacking and or chump blocking then uh some stone rain to hopefully slow the game down a little bit of board sweeping action to slow the game down as well so land stone rain on the castle lockthwain don't mind if i do get out of here castle lockthwain yes send it away Opponent does have another land drop, though, unfortunately. And Bantu's Last Reckoning going to frost all their lands. Not thrilled about that. We don't really have a follow-up. Um, 
Thinking about playing with fire their face and elect not to. Glad we didn't. Cosmos Elixir was on the top. Going to do a little scrying, a little uh, sending to the bottom. Of course, we know we already have a relatively expedient way of winning the game with Burn Down the House in our hand, as well as the Stone Rain on the ground. So what we really need is just to find our Arcane Bombardment. So we send that down and away. Uh, trying to figure out which direction to go. We elect to go Anger into play with fire because we didn't want to lose the game. Cosmos Elixir, instead of gaining us life and scrying though, actually starts drawing us cards. Opponent, with the Inquisition of Kozilek, gets to grab an Anger of the Gods or Static Discharge. They go with the Static Discharge, unsurprisingly. And Davriel, Rogue Shadow Mage, going to go up, force us to discard. What do we choose? It's a little bit questionable here, actually. But uh, at the end of the day, I think... Sending the Anger of the Gods away makes the most sense because at least Burn Down the House can do all of the things we require of it. Our opponent, though, thinking about their hand. And Davriel hits us. Oh my word, there it is. Well, we wanted to burn down the house, maybe uh, make dudes, attack the Davriel or something like that, but... At the end of the day, we just can't justify it. Um, the Arcan we Our opponents already shown us a fair amount of discard. They probably have Thought Seizes. We know they at least have a Davriel activation. If we cast Burn down the house uh, and they have another Davriel in hand or something, we don't get to do our thing. All right, well, inconvenient. That is not an instant sorcery, but that one is feels good, man, and they may be able to make us discard our cards, but they can't make us discard the top of our library. So... Opponent, thinking about doing things, probably mainly considering the Davriel activation, elects not to do it, so we find Stone Rain off the top, Arcane Bombardment. Alright, opponent activates in response, pays four life for a card. Well, Anger of the Gods, not quite what we uh, were looking for, but we will cast it because, darn it, uh, why put cards in under Arcane Bombardment you don't want to cast, right? Who knows? All right, opponent has Warlock class. That's terrifying, and levels it up immediately. Goes for a look. Sends a couple of cards over, and puts a land into play. All right, we take two more. Well, it's at least an instant sorcery. It isn't Anger of the Gods. We're not super thrilled about that. But Play With Fire going to finally clean that Davriel out of there. We're not better, Davriel. We still love you. But alas, it is what it is. All right. <laughs> this is really not the card we were looking for. You know, we want instants and sorceries, though. So just having it be the fact that it's a sorcery is a good thing. And boom, there we go. That's why we wanted it. We get a burn down the house. Going to start making devils every turn or hopefully every turn. We do get to play with fire their face. So that means an extra scry here. Send a land away. Make some dudes, but then anger the gods because remember, we uh, we had to cast that in order to get things going. No, I did not elect to cast that from under Arcane Bombardment. That was just one of the things. Now, darn it, we draw the extra card, but it's it's two lands running. Okay, well, I guess we make the land drop because you know reasons. Hot seizes away our burn down the house. Come on, man. All right, no, it's another land. <laughs> All right, opponent's war Warlock class there, doing a whole lot of nothing. I assume our opponent's got a bunch of creature removal and things like that, you know. All right, so we will make dudes. We will play with Fire Your Face. We will decline to cast both of those. And, oh boy, Igneous in Inspiration is actually a really, really good draw here. Uh, the learning thing, very strong, as well as the fact that we have essentially lethal in play here. Our opponent does kill our dinosaur, but takes four. We have, you know, just a whole mess of... Uh, very, very threatening cards. We like not to make a land drop because our opponent could have a mind rot effect, you know, go blank or something like that where we have to discard two cards and boom, we would discard a pair of mountains that we don't need. Oh boy, we weren't expecting Extinction Event. It doesn't end up mattering though because we do have the Igneous Inspiration which can go to any target. Our opponent's face is a target. All right, sitting there trying or er, contemplating making sure I was gonna do this properly. And then I realized, how could I do it improperly? <laughs> and cast this. So GG, legendary G, legendary G, GG.
All right, folks, here we are up against Ico 1998. And, oh, no, it's Mono Red. Icon, or Kumano faces Kakazan. Very strong card. All right, now this is with the next version of the build. You'll see that Electrostatic Blast now in our hand. Uh, that ended up replacing our Stone Rains um, because this is, again, post-stream. Interesting here, we could Static Discharge the Soulscar Mage. The problem is we're afraid they just have a Shock or, you know, something like that. And then they grow the Soulscar Mage and our Static Discharge does nothing, essentially. They did have a Spike Field Hazard, so we properly played around the Prowess Trigger. Inconvenient. But we are roughly taking 25 million damage here. We do Electrostatic Blast to save two of it, but we drop to 11. Not ideal. Okay, we do decide that we've really got to do that. I do make a little punt there by playing a land first. I was quite concerned about what was going on there and did not think through that turn entirely. You know, obviously, we were, our life is low, but that's the time you're supposed to slow down, folks, and be careful about your decisions, not, uh, not the other way around. So naturally, I do it backwards. All right, so we go for... The Elemental Summoning, first of all, because it's a spell we can cast next turn, and it's a good one. Uh, uses up our mana, and it blocks very well, right? Our opponent also knows about it, and we do want to deploy Burn Down the Houses as quickly as possible, but we also know that when you're up against Mono Red, it's a very regular thing where you need to use Board Sweepers, you know? Our, our opponent could be doing that. All right, so Bone Crusher Giant and Soul Scar Mage. You got it. Opponent has no cards in hand, though. So, fine. We go for... Play with Fire to prevent them from chumping. And then pass. This... Line is not great against um, Ember Cleave specifically, but we were afraid they were going to activate their Down of the Bugbear. So we wanted to be able to get in front of that. But we also didn't want our opponent being able to put negative one, negative one counters on our 4 4 and allow them to keep their uh, Bone Crusher Giant in play. So we do decide all right, let's get some Devils into play. Uh, and I hold one back. This isn't great against removal, but we're, our life total is still relatively high at eight. Oh, crud. Down to six. Ugh. We do need to get the game to end. Our opponent does go with Den of the Bugbear and attacks. Well. All right. Since they're tapped out now, we're just trying to minimize the amount of damage we take, so we're going to kill it like this. Uh... And like that. Now, we elect to go with Den of the Bugbear because it's actually a little more damage. The issue is we hit that pesky attack all button. And the opponent goes with play with fire. Light up the stage. Skewer the critics and Gitsu Lava Runner for GG. If we had held back naught but a single creature, we would have won. But darn it. The attack all button strikes again, and we die. Uh, GG opponent, GG. <laughs> Ugh. All right, folks, here we are up against Roy. Good luck, Roy. And yeah, so far the deck is uh, is doing pretty well. Can't really complain. This hand though is questionable. Um, the Big Score, another one of those additions we made during the stream. Uh, just being able to filter to find our combo. Once Arcane Bombardment gets down, honestly, the, g <laughs> the game gets pretty easy. It's just a matter of finding the quickest line to killing them. Um, but it's finding it that matters, right? So here we are trying to play some Big Score to uh, sort that out. There was a case we made for Static Discharge on our opponent's face there. Since they're playing Maze Mind Tome on 2 instead of a creature, it's unlikely to be used as a lot of removal. But we also figure maybe they're doing Planeswalkery stuff, things like that. So, um, our opinion is if they're going to do nothing, we're just going to match it. We're going to also do nothing and plan on uh, 
playing the slow game and doing all that. So we big score, send away, burn down the house, because we actually want to exile that with the Arcane Bombardment as soon as possible. And boom, uh, here we go. It is an Arcane Bombardment turn. We don't have a one drop, though, so we can't follow it up with a spell. It's no big deal. There aren't that many cards in black that remove enchantments. Uh, so I'm sure everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, oh, no! Invoke Despair, living up to its name. Darn it. That is very sad. Very sad indeed. So suddenly I was sitting there thinking, man, I wish we'd Cosmos Elixir instead of trying to get that down. But it is what it is. Uh, Cosmos Elixir going to come down this turn. And it is true, I think, that there aren't a ton of mono black ways of art handling artifacts. So that much is good. Going to keep our life total defended, at least to a certain extent. Golos, Tireless Pilgrim, comes down, finds Cabal, Stronghold, Good Gravy. All right, opponent going to Thoughtseize. Take. Not sure. They aren't either. A Static Discharge. Pay a couple of life for the privilege. We're going to go ahead and down to the Bugbear. And we're planning on Igneous Inspirationing to find a Mascot Exhibition. Let's see if we can close this game out. Now, we do elect to spend the treasure to exile the Golos. Because since they are in Mono Black, it's not unreasonable to believe that they have some way of retrieving it from the bin. And we'd really rather not. Especially considering uh, we don't... You know, they, they're clearly not playing a ton of creatures. So... Uh, Oh, crud, there's a second Invoke Despair. Good lord, but we have nothing, so they just, you know, make us pay a bunch of life and draw a bunch of cards. Suddenly, a pair of Thought Seizes. Our opponent's on 14. Good gravy. Well, all right. If you want to play that game, that's fine. Opponent, Maze Mind Tomes to gain four life back up to 18, but darn it, we're going to take that four life right back away from you with a Den of the Bugbear crashing in. A little bit of damage going to happen. Yes, four damage. Scavenger Grounds goes away. Opponent. Thinking about things. We do have a creature left behind now. Yay. Holy crud, folks. You're kidding me. It's another Invoke Despair. Jeez Louise. And boom, the Graveyard Trespasser making it to the battlefield. Going to start exiling our bin. That's not very nice. We want to exile our bin ourselves. Thank you very much. Well, all right. Big score. Send away the spike field hazard. Draw some cards. Hey, there we go. How about Anger of the Gods? No, let's just Sweltering Suns. Uh, because uh, we're expecting more of those sorts of things. And suddenly it occurred to me that maybe this sort of deck is... You know, maybe it's just not quite running properly for our opponent. And maybe they're going to be doing things like Skyclave Apparition. Um, and just trying to recur it over and over and over. They have, you know, we've seen a number of Maze Mind Tomes and ways of making land drops, things like that. So, that could be the case. That said, uh, they ca they throw another Graveyard Trespasser down. So, we sweep it away with the Anger of the Gods. Anyhow, this turn, we... Play it out of the bugbear, tapped, and our opponent has their own den of, or, uh, removal spell for our den of the bugbear, which is March of Wretched Sorrow. Gains a couple of life in the process. We do send a um, looting effect to the bottom because if we draw it for the turn, we have nothing to discard, right? So in addition to cat or to its mana cost, when you cast the spell, you have to do the thing. You have to discard a card, which we can't do. Our opponent has another graveyard trespasser. Well, we really desperately need a land off the top. Holy crud, because geez louise. I mean, uh, we need it to not be a land on the top, I should say. Because we need to be able to get rid of these creatures. But we really don't want them to flip. Well, it turns out, even better yet, it's not a land. It's not a, an instant or sorcery either. But it is an arcane bombardment. The card we have been looking for all game long uh, on the top of our library and now on the top of our library is an electrostatic blast our opponent has three invoke despairs in the bin no uh it's it's very unlikely they have a way to get back invoke despair so there is that all right opponent has another life of tushiro and getting in for a lot of damage they kind of exile at random here which was a bit of a mistake i wouldn't call it like 
you know, game breaking, but it could be. All right, so I elect to animate the den of the bugbear here, which, uh, because we were, our opponent was definitely representing removal. Admittedly, I was going to say, uh, it's kind of a mistake to do, I think, because it's too risky. If they don't have removal and we do get anger of the gods, we still have to sweep. So I think that was that was an error on my part for the record. Um, but alas, it is what it is. Uh, opponent has a memory of Tushiro. And oh my goodness, here is Karn, the great creator. Ay ay ay. Finding Golos Tireless Pilgrim from the sideboard. Golos Tireless Pilgrim. Digs for a land. Finds another Cabal Stronghold. Our opponent has roughly 25 million mana. Fires up a Maze Mind Tome for the final time. It goes away. Gains some life. Back up to 24. Folks, we have taxed our opponent's life total relatively healthily. And boy, boy. Just turn after turn after turn. Still goes. Alright, so we don't want our opponent to be able to filter that mana. We do, so we, and we also don't want it to go to nighttime just in case they have more dudes. So we uh, go for the abrade on the Tireless Pilgrim to make sure it goes away. Of course, the uh, Spike Field Hazard just taxes Karn's loyalty a wee bit um, and can exile it. The burn down the house was very, very tempting there, and it's possible it was incorrect to go about it this way. Um, but I, you know, trying to get a diverse number of spells into the bin, um, but I, I do think having a burn down the house in the bin as opposed to just in the generic exile would have been valuable there. Our opponent does fire up Cabal Stronghold. Cling to dust! Oh, crud, folks, that's a nasty card against us. That is a hateful, hateful card indeed. Our opponent mills over some more of their library. Takanumas to get back. A graveyard Trespasser, sure enough. We were uh, thinking about exiling those. And here it is. It has not yet even one time transferred over to night yet. So, still a 3-3. Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Going to get in, though. Inconvenient. Going to start exiling things. And yeah, they see they take our burn down the house. Unfortunate. But, Electrostatic Blast. Triggering. Arcane Bombardment. Well, that's definitely going to happen. That's definitely going to happen. Igneous Inspiration is a good one to exile because now, yep, putting those valuable high-end cards into our hand, definitely, definitely, definitely a positive thing as far as we're concerned. Now, we also have the mana for Field of Ruin. We've been holding it up on the, re or we, you know, had it available to a certain extent on the regular here. Uh, find an Arcane Bombardment. It was tempting to keep, but... At the end of the day, we decided to send it away because we already have one. They've already fired off three Invoke Despairs. If they have another one, they kind of get us. But we're riding the Razor's Edge here. We're trying not to die. So, oh crud, they cling to dust again. Ten cards remain in their uh, bin, so there's more cling to dusting in our future should our opponent want to. And boom, it's another Karn the Great Creator. Darn it. Hey, folks, this is a grindy one. Kind of great creator goes down. Got to be slim pickings in there now, because I assume they have like, you know, a graft digger's cage or, you know, whatever, that sort of thing for that matchup. Maybe a spell that can't be countered or something like that for those matchups, right? So they go after Maze Mind Tome just to get more cards into hand. I don't blame them, uh, but sure. Unlikely that our opponent has too much Arcane Bombardment hate tech, you know, uh, in their sideboard. So generic, generic Maze Mind Tome it is. Opponent clinging to dust again. It's our uh, Electrostatic Blast. Not thrilled about it. And I'm taking my time out thinking about firing off the Field of Run. This would be a good opportunity to be mana efficient and get rid of the Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Um, thinking about what's in our bin, the things we could potentially do, I eventually decide, you know what? No, this is fine. Now, again, the reason it was tempting to fire that off is we're not even that close to max or Mascot Exhibition right now because we can't use the treasure. Um, 
and it, you know, with, with the Karn there, there was no, no guarantee we we're going to be able to trigger the thing, and in fact, it doesn't happen. Now, fortunately, it wasn't just a land. It was a Cosmos Elixir, so we do have a spell to cast. It doesn't go to nighttime, but it is really inconvenient, and we are kind of getting beat down by that Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Now, the fact that it was a Cosmos Elixir means that we're not dying to the Hive of the Eye Tyrant anymore. It's actually kind of nice. Our opponent clings to dust again. Good heavens, our graveyard getting absolutely picked apart, but we do have an Abrade waiting in the wings. Karn the Great Creator. Going down. Thinking about it. Goes for Golos. So apparently the pickings weren't quite so slim as we had thought. Anyway, the good news, folks, is that we held an Abrade. You gotta love it. That's a good one indeed. Unfortunately, we're still not going to be able to cast this mascot exhibition. We've been bottoming all those lands um, with all of our scries for obvious reasons. But when you do that, you don't have it. Now, folks, uh, after all of this stuff, our opponent's actually down to eight cards in library. No, I'm not kidding. Eight cards in library. Right? They've done some self-milling a little bit with the Takanumas and stuff, but for the most part, they've just been drawing millions and millions of cards. Now, their graveyard is also empty because they've been clinging to dust over and over and over and over, and they have effectively emptied our graveyard, that is true. Uh, but now, they don't have any more cling to dust activations available, and boom, here's Hive of the Eye Tyrant. How annoying. Well, moment of truth, do we fire off the Abrade? Or do we save it because of the Hive of the Eye Tyrant, right? Well, we elect to go this direction. We don't have anything in the bin to exile, so it's just the cards that we already knew about. We go this direction because the Karn can go away. And it allows us to go back to our bin. There's a start from scratch. Remember, this is a sorcery, though. Um, and then our electrostatic blast trigger does happen, and yes, don't mind if I do, it's a burn down the house from the electrostatic blast trigger. And boom, another one on top. Thank heavens, we've been digging for these. So we elect to try and turn the corner a little bit, trying to put our opponent on the defensive. We don't have to delay too long. Again, if nothing else, their deck is a win condition, and we do have two Cosmos Elixirs down. It is unlikely our opponent has the ability to get rid of a Cosmos Elixir. Six cards remain in the library now. But putting our opponent on the defensive isn't the end of the world either, right? Particularly not if our opponent can... They, they've only cast three Invoke Despairs, right? One, two, three, right there. Yep. So they could have all four. It seems unlikely. You know, that's not the sort of card when you already have Goloses and things like that. You, there's strongly possible you might not want to be casting or have more than four in the deck or three in the deck. <laughs> you certainly don't want to have more than four in the deck. That would be, that would be against the rules. Uh, but it would make sense. Okay, so Devil, doing devilly things. Murderous Rider kills it. All right, Relica Progenitus. No. Exiles are stuff. Admittedly, their clinging dust goes away as well, but... Oh, no. There's the Invoke Despair. That They did have the fourth one. Darn it. All right. That said, we now have to decide. How are we going about this? Right? We don't have the Mascot Exhibition yet. So, I decide, let's get rid of the uh, Maze Mind Tome. And I think that might have been an error. Getting rid of the Maze Mind Tome, like, if they wanted to draw cards, that's probably fine. But as far as that's concerned, though, we're also in, you know, relatively good shape. The only thing, they, since they have infinite mana, the only thing I felt like might kill us was if our opponent did deploy, you know, their entire hand in one turn. Like, maybe they're sandbagging a bunch of stuff or something, right? And they could just really get it down, and the burn down the house would have to be our answer. So we figured, what the heck, let's limit the number of cards they get. I think that was incorrect, because I don't think this game is going to end in uh, 
with that mattering. Now, you'll note a turn or two ago, while I was flapping my gums, our opponent put a bunch of counters on Blast Zone. Yeah, they added six, which is why I didn't even bother mentioning it at the time. We don't have any seven traps in our deck. Our opponent was trying to get it onto six counters so they could destroy an arcane bombardment, but yeah, they added six and felt a little bad about it, I think. So, we're not worried about having to Field of Ruin the um, Blast Zone anymore. We Field of Ruin the Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Our opponent looks like, I was thinking, oh, they're just gonna tap, 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 concede here. That's not the plan. They do have a plan for all this mana. It's March of Wretched Sorrow to gain 19 life, put a murderous rider right onto the battlefield. So we burn down the house. The thing I wasn't considering is that that actually puts the murderous rider on the bottom. We don't want that, right? We want them to be able to deck. So suddenly I realized, darn it, we're at 22 life gaining four a turn. If our opponent wants to cast a, or wants to attack us with murderous rider, fine. <laughs> hey! It's another arcane bombardment. <laughs> All right, Cosmos Elixir not going to gain us any life since we're above 20, but it is going to add a bunch of cards to our hand. And finally, it goes to nighttime. All right, Hive of the Eye Tyrant becoming alive. It's alive! And a Murder Shrider coming from hand. You got it. That's uh, five this turn, seven next turn. But, folks, the cards in library, a very, very real concern. Our opponent, two cards remain in library, and we know the bottom one's the Murder Rider, which isn't going to do it, right? So we get a land, and not because I think it's the correct play necessarily, but because I think it's what I want to do with my life. We cast Arcane Bombardment. Scry a million things to the bottom. Our library also getting kind of thin, but 22 is a lot more than two. Our opponent takes a card for the turn down to the last final remaining card in their library. It is a Murderous Rider, and we know about it. Our opponent casts the Locked Wains to add the Murderous Rider to hand and add some more mana. Activates the Blast Zone. <laughs> Activates the Hive of the Eye Tyrant. And swings in. Hive the Eye Tyrant going to exile from our graveyard. Whew. That was a marathon, folks. That was a marathon, and we are glad we did it. GG, Roy. GG. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, we had a wild time, didn't we? Jeez, Louise. Uh, those were some real games. And for what it's worth, I had a blast. Uh, no complaints. Um, I think the first version of the deck was fun. I think it was not as good. Like, I mean, in fairness, I think particularly if you were in the play queue, uh, you would get enough wins, and some of the wins would be so much fun, you would probably be okay with it. But I think you would struggle somewhat. Particularly, uh, the Stone Rain filling that void did slow down some games, but then there were plenty of games where it just didn't, right? So, uh, Stone Rains for big scores, specifically, giving us the ability to discard and draw. When we cast this from underneath Arcane Bombardment, we don't have to actually cast this card. The problem with big score is you draw big score for the turn, it's essentially, you would have drawn any other card if it weren't for that. So then when you spend big score, you're spending a card, discarding another card. So you spend two cards to get one card. Or I mean, to get two cards, right? So it's 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 actually card neutral. When you spend it from under Arcane Bombardment, though, you do have to discard, but you're not spending an actual card. You're just getting that. So you spend one card to get two cards. So it's essentially a chart of course or something like that. Uh, and it, it turns out to be very good. The other notable thing here, and don't overlook it, is the creating two treasures. This this was a big game. Going from four mana to six mana is huge in this deck because if we have Arcane Bombardment, the biggest problem with it is if we wait too long to cast it, we die. And we, you know, we won't have spells to cast afterwards and we're gonna lose the game. So being able to like have four mana on the battlefield, pass the turn. Our opponent does stuff, does stuff, does stuff. We big score 
make two treasures, immediately untap Arcane Bombardment. If we have a land drop and a one drop, we can even trigger Arcane Bombardment on the same turn because we would have access to seven mana if we have a land drop, which is not too hard to line up with big score. Um, but just getting up to the Arcane Bombardment uh, in a timely manner is very, very powerful. And uh, so I definitely think that was a good change. Uh, the other one is Electrostatic Blast. Um, we ended up on, we, we tried it for, with four for a while and we ended up on three. I think this is questionable. Uh, we, we might be able to do better than this and I'd, I'd like to hear what you folks have to say about it um, because it's actually kind of inconvenient that the things just stay in exile. Um, exile the top three cards of your library, you may play one of those. The other two are gone for good. They don't go to your bin. So when we can be able to play a spell after that, it's very good. But sometimes we just leave very valuable cards in exile stuff. I don't know. It's a little strange. Uh, definitely worth exploring, but I, I don't know, right? Um, you know, there are other cards we could potentially play, uh, like uh, Bone Crusher Giant and stuff. Bone Crusher Giant is interesting because a lot of the time... We don't really care about exiling our, you know, our, our da little, smaller damage based things with Arcane Bombardment. We just need to trigger Arcane Bombardment. So we would then be more likely to exile the more valuable burn down the houses and static discharges and things if we had Bone Crusher Giant down there. But there's the catch 22 of not being able to. So you would much rather cast something with Arcane Bombardment than not. And since you can't exile the Bone Crusher Giant, who knows? Uh, that said, I think the deck, the deck is really, really sweet. Would I encourage you to craft it if you were just in the play queue? Absolutely. I think it's a ton of fun. Highly encouraged, particularly if you've got the Angering Gods, Sweltering Suns already. Uh, yeah, uncommon, uncommon, uncommon. These are rares, but again, I think this could be almost any other burn spell as well. Uh, uncommons, uncommon. Technically a rare, but could just be on the spike field hazard potentially. If you have these, these are rares, of course, then you're pretty much good, right? Uh, commons. A couple of rares. I think the burn down of houses are required. And then just the only mythics are the Arcane Bombardments. So Arcane Bombardments, burn down the houses. Um, if you've already got the sweepers, like the, the, you might even have the stuff in your deck or in your collection already just to kind of put the deck together uh, and, and have a good time. At least, again, in the play queue. Uh, as far as in the ranked queue, we did play it a fair amount in the ranked queue and it didn't do terrible, but it didn't do good either. Maybe if you find a few ways of tweaking it, I think... The best of one queue is aggressive enough that there, if you could get this deck to like 75% against creature decks, you know, aggressive things, seems possible. Just heavily tilted, slant it towards beating those decks. I think you'd be like at a 60% win rate all on, all on its own, right? So given that's the case, there might be something here. And if you find it, let me know. In the meantime, uh, appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. It really, really helps the channel, folks. We're, we're just little and we're trying to grow. So uh, let me know what you uh, what you think about this down in the comments below. That also really, really helps. Uh, I also have a Twitch channel if you want to follow over there. Be a big help. Come on over. We, we'd love to have you. I stream five nights a week. Uh, so either way, though, I appreciate you all, and you have a fantastic day.